Hey, so I'm about to show you what I consider to be the greatest concert program in the history of concert programs. Check this out. This is the concert program for today. And apart from me, only one other person has signed up for it. And his name is also Nicholas. And you know what that means? Today's concert is gonna be a Nicholas only concert. <laughs> heading to a dress rehearsal and we've arrived at the performance hall so this is a weekly event called piano tuesdays where you play for some piano professors who sit over there and yeah they watch us play and give helpful comments i'm currently in my piano teacher's studio picking up the program for today's concert. Also, the concert program says I'm only doing two pieces, but I'm actually doing all three Liszt Petrarch sonnets. And also, it's surprising that no one signs up for these concerts because they're like such a good performance experience. Because right now, after I performed on Saturday and Monday, I'm now less nervous to perform on this Tuesday concert. So it's good having practice in performing. All right, so now it's time to put the concert program on the stand outside the concert hall, and now it's time for the concert. This is the other Nicholas, and we also got comment sheets. So, what, what did you play? Oh, I played Janacek's uh, Piano Sonata, October 1st, 1905. Yeah, and you that playing the list, right? Yeah, the three Petrarch sonnets. Yeah, yeah. And that was really good. Like, the, in the first movements, the, yeah. <laughs> the, the, the left hand was just crazy. It's so much fun. Mm -hmm. It's definitely a piece worth playing. Yeah. And here are the comments that I received for this performance. The props definitely offered good insight into what I have to improve. Now, my next destination is going to be the library because I need to grab a book from here. This is for my next class, which is a one hour composition tutorial with one of the composition professors. My teacher, Professor Harmon, likes to dedicate a portion of the lesson time into analyzing contemporary scores. And he's instructed me to bring one score per lesson to analyze. So for today's lesson, we'll be looking at Charles Ives' Central Park in the Dark. <laughs> Bro, even the library checkout machine needs an update. That's kind of funny. And yeah, now it's time to just sit at a table in the library and study the score, as well as work on my composition before the tutorial starts. So I'm currently headed to the sixth floor, ready for my composition tutorial. Yeah, okay, so I'm currently with my professor, Chris Paul Harmon, and yeah, we're in the middle of a tutorial. Well, we've been here for almost an hour and a half. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, um, we can go over time. Um, it happens. Yeah, well, when we get too caught up with analysis. We've just been analyzing the Central Park in the Dark, and we've also looked at parts of my composition. To any incoming students or people, like students interested in composition, maybe here at McGill, mm -hmm. what would you be looking for when they submit their application or portfolio or compositions? Well, at the, at the undergraduate level, we look for a variety of things. We, we like to see that incoming students have a good academic record. And then in music, we, we like to see signs of creativity and imagination. Uh, we like to see if, if the student is able to represent their creativity clearly and effectively in notation. Um, and that's about it, really. Actually, a lot, of, a lot of students don't have a lot of composition experience before they come to university. So it is not unusual for someone to apply uh, for an intra-faculty intra transfer. Oh, yeah, like, sort, sort of like me. <laughs> yeah, sort of like you. 
Yeah, so in my first year, I entered as a piano performance student. And then towards the end of my first year, I realized that I kind of liked composition a lot. So I just attempted to apply with some works I had. And surprisingly, I got in. Yeah, so uh, to any incoming students, um, yeah, <laughs> hopefully this was helpful. And thank you, uh, Professor thank you. Chris Paul Harmon, for this. <laughs> okay, so I'm back from composition tutorial. Well, back in the practice yeah. room, I guess. It is currently 6 p.m. and I have about an hour left until it's 7 where I'm going to meet the performers of my composition. It's a bassoon and viola composition and it's the first time I'm working with performers, so I'm pretty excited and also nervous as to what's going to happen. So I printed out my parts for the composition that I'm going to be working together with the performers for on right now. All right, so this is a future Nicholas here to explain what the rehearsals are for. So every year, the McGill Association of Student Composers puts on two composition concerts, so one per semester. I'm actually also one of the co-chairs for the concert committee, which plans out these concerts. For the fall semester, my composition will be performed, so I have to find performers that are willing to play my piece, as well as arrange subsequent rehearsal times. So it's quite a bit of work. Oh, this is really dark. But yeah, the rehearsal with the performers for my composition has finished and wow. It's one thing to hear a computer play the piece perfectly than it is to hear a performer play a piece because the computer doesn't notice if some things are more yeah. demanding to play. So there were some awkward passages in my composition that the performers just had a lot of trouble playing but the computer just played it flawlessly, so I didn't notice. So it's a good thing that I spoke to these performers, and I'm gonna fix up the score in a bit. All right, so that's basically it for this video. Now, the most valuable thing I've learned so far as a composer is that having real life performers to actually play your piece is the number one most useful thing ever because they can actually give advice on what is idiomatic and actually possible for the instruments. If you found this video informative or funny, be sure to hit that like button and consider subscribing for more content like this. Oh, and also be sure to check out Day 5 over here. See ya!